The ground we've covered so far is fairly straightforward. The difficult question arises when considering the correct prophylaxis for patients under varying circumstances. If we could condense the answer into one simple statement, it would be, the first consideration should always be active immunization with tetanus vaccine. Vaccine vigorously boosts antibody levels in the already immune patient and promotes long-lasting immunity. It brings the partly immune, one who has had only one or two doses, closer to completing his basic course. It primes the non-immune and sets them on their way to completing the basic course. It is the only long-term insurance against that 50% of trivial or untraceable wounds resulting in tetanus. It eventually protects the patient against his own mistreatment of a minor but dirty wound that may become infected and anaerobic. You may find, beyond doubt, that the patient has had his basic three-dose course, plus a booster within the last two years. In this case, no immunoprophylaxis at all is necessary. Or, the wound proves to be slight, fresh and clean, the patient properly immunised, and within the ten-year booster period. Again, no immunoprophylaxis. But even with these two situations, the two exceptions to giving additional prophylaxis, the basic rule still applies. You have considered giving vaccine first. Only then should you consider other factors, whether the patient is at risk and requires TIG, passive immunization, after the vaccine has been administered. TIG should only be used for the type of tetanus-prone wound discussed earlier. And then, only if the patient is non-immune, partly immune, or has not had his regular vaccine booster for more than 10 years. This table sets out simply the methods of tetanus prophylaxis and is available free on request from the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories. It takes into account the type of wound, if the patient is immune, partly immune, non-immune. To apply these guidelines to the surgery situation, let's presume a patient presents with an accident wound. On examination, it has appeared severe enough to cause anaerobic conditions, a tetanus-prone wound. Your records show that the patient is basically immunized and that his last booster dose was given less than two years ago. The prophylaxis? None. But what if his last booster dose was given three years ago? The prophylaxis? Well, he is still within the regular 10-year booster period, so a tetanus vaccine booster is all that is necessary. But then your records might show no booster dose within the last 10 years, or that his immune status is doubtful. The prophylaxis? You would give him a vaccine booster and TIG. The vaccine should be injected into one limb, the TIG into the opposite limb, using a separate syringe. This treatment is called active-passive immunization. Follow-up doses of tetanus vaccine should be recommended to the patient where a basic course is incomplete. And what of emergency accident cases where the patient is unconscious or his immune status unknown? The prophylaxis? Give vaccine, then TIG, active, passive immunization.